And if we could have Rory, please lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Rory. Could we have the roll call, please? Director Huffer. Yes. Director Lang. Here. Director Kussler. Yes. Director Nichols. Yes. Director Buss. Yes. Thank you. All present and accounted for. We item three special presentations. We have two this evening. First is the Mountains Recreation and Conservation Authority. Take it away, Rory. Now it is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Logistics. Um, I appreciate very much you asking me to come to give you a little uh, preview or presses of uh, presi of uh, what the Mountains Recreation and Conservation Authority is and does. Um, it is a joint exercise of powers agency between the Caneo Rec and Park District, Rancho Semi Rec and Park District, and the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy. The chair of the MRCA is Director Lang and has been for quite a quite a few years. Uh, it also uh, includes Dan Peronek, the general manager of the Rancho Semi Park District, uh, Irma Munoz, who is a conservancy board member, and Jim Hasenauer, who's the public member appointed by the other three board members. Um, it's been in existence since 1985. Um, it is uh, uh, at this point, I would actually dare to say that it's the preeminent park and conservation agency in Southern California. Uh, I think we're up to getting close to 100,000 acres of land preserved with the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy and land owned by the MRCA. Uh, the tech, uh, not techs, <laughs> Jim Friedel is, serves as the financial officer for MRCA. So the park district has been integral from the very beginning and you are such a principal partner. There's no way that all these success stories could have happened without the uh, without the Canal Recreation and Park District. Let me go on to the next. So it was formed, as I said, in. Did you dance one? The right. Nope. There we go. Ah, okay. So it, it actually came about um, the Conservancy had given a million dollar grant to the district to purchase the Carlisle Inlet picnic grounds at Lake Sherwood. This is when it was a fairly bucolic site. Um, as, as you, some of you old timers might remember, uh, there was a lot of controversy. Dayton Realty owned the property, wanted to develop. They drained the lake on the uh, fiction that they needed to do that to inspect the dam. Um, the appropriation was going to expire and Tex Ward, your former general manager, came up with the idea with Joe Edmiston, and my boss, how about if we form a JPA and then the Conservancy can re-grant that million dollars to the JPA, hence the MRCA. There we go. Another big uh, acquisition in the mid 1980s was Circle X Ranch, former Boy Scout property, 1600 acres at the top of the Santa Monica Mountains. We we think of it as Boney Mountain, uh, Sandstone Peak is part of that property. Um, we had a sort of a big fight, the Conservancy did with the sister state agency, the State Coastal Conservancy. They had money to buy it. They didn't want to grant it for this, they said it's too far away from the coast and we actually made it happen. Uh, actually in some, some degree, thanks to former assembly member, Tom McClendick of all, of all people. <laughs> he had been a boy scout and had gone to that property and he really wanted it saved. However, because of the Northern part was outside of the coastal zone, the Coastal Conservancy couldn't grant those funds, but we said, ah, but it's in the MRCA. So MRCA used some of the money from the uh, repurposed Lake Sherwood grant uh, to acquire that, and also uh, the Lang Ranch, um, Oak, Brook, Oak Brook Park mm -hmm. area. 
Here's some views of Circle X. It's now owned by the National Park Service. We turned it over to the Park Service in 1987. Then another big uh, appropriation was the conservancy had given to the Rancho Sami district to buy China Flat, Bob Hope's property at the top of the former Jordan Ranch or Palo Camado Canyon. Um, Hope was not a willing seller. He said, I'm not going to carve off that, that property. You can buy all of my land for $30 million. It was, oh, ha, ha, ha. Not, not at all possible at that time. But um, so we uh, reappropriated the grant to Rancho Sami to the MRCA. And it is a great connector because it does connect over, uh, over to Rancho Simi uh, jurisdiction on the other side of the top of the Simi Hills. In the late 1980s, early 1990s, there were a lot of uh, landfill uh, proposals by Los Angeles County Sanitation District. Towsley Canyon was one of them. Um, it was a only 145 acre property, but we were importuned to try and buy that, which we did. And then after that, Chevron, which owned the majority of the property in what's called the Santa Clarita Woodlands, just west of the five freeway and the Newhall Pass, uh, had great development plans because they weren't doing oil well uh, work in there anymore. Um, and uh, they, they, we were able to buy uh, over 2,000 acres of Chevron property, and then they donated Mentryville, 850 acres. It was the site of the first commercially successful oil well west of Pennsylvania, 1876. So it is a historic site, very popular spot for hiking and movie filming. So the woodlands is quite extraordinary. It is a remnant uh, forest. There's big cone Douglas fir, five species of oak, very, very rich in biodiversity and wildlife. Uh, Towsey Canyon, with the first acquisition, has a had a ranch house that we use for, as a lodge so people can rent it for events or for weddings. Wildlife connectivity has been an organizing principle for the Conservancy and MRCA. It has uh, actually uh, informed our land use um, uh, strategies and policies to try and acquire properties that have great significance for maintaining the ability to connect across the mountain ranges. Uh, the, the Santa Clarita Woodlands was a case in point. And of course, Liberty Canyon is another one. Um, the MRCA bought property on both the north and south sides of the freeway in an effort to at least preserve the uh, possibility of habitat connectivity. Uh, some of you may remember that a number of years ago at the right at the Liberty off-ramp, there's a big plateau and had a giant billboard that said future home of Carpeteria. <laughs> so that was a that was a landmark day when we were able to uh, chainsaw down that sign and pull it down and uh, then acquired other properties in the meantime. So this is going to be the site. In fact, it is the site of the ongoing construction for the Wallace Annenberg Wildlife Bridge. Other properties that lead up to the uh, and are part of the whole wildlife connectivity Triangle Ranch in Nagura Hills. Uh, we just completed about a year ago the final piece of Triangle Ranch, which had an approved tentative track map on it. Um, we'll be dedicating that in honor of former uh, Supervisor Sheila Kuehl on May 21st, and everyone is invited just off Keenan Doom Road. The, the Annenberg Wildlife Crossing, as you know, has been a long-term project with partners, the National Park Service and their biologists, National Wildlife Federation, Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, Caltrans, and principally MRCA. So MRCA and Caltrans have a management or cooperative agreement whereby Caltrans is doing the work. They bill MRCA. MRCA pays those invoices with the grants that National Wildlife Federation has accumulated uh, and also a big grant from the Conservancy. So um, we're all interconnected here. The Park Service biologists are absolutely key. They've been the ones that have sort of helped uh, promote the idea that this is the last remaining spot where we could get a lot of animals across the freeway. Or we tried under the freeway, a tunnel was not gonna work scientifically, uh, although it could have been done um, by engineering, but it would not have been good for animals. So that bridge is under construction uh, where it'll also go over Agoura Road, that's stage two. And uh, the target is completion by late 20, 
25, God willing. This was the groundbreaking a year ago on Earth Day with Governor Newsom and a cast of thousands. We had all the local congressional delegation members, uh, Senator Padilla, all kinds of folks. And Wallace Annenberg, which you may wonder, why is it called the Wallace Annenberg Wildlife Crossing? Her philanthropic uh, efforts put in 25 million towards the, the total, about 92 million for the construction costs. Uh, other landmark properties that uh, MRCA manages include this one in Pacific Palisades. It's owned by the Conservancy, but that's, that's something to really remember. The Conservancy only has six staff people and does not have the ability to actually manage or steward property. We don't have those kind of, those that, that staff has not been appropriated by the legislature. So MRCA has about 140 staff, fire uh, division people, rangers, maintenance, construction, park planners, uh, and, and finance. <laughs> Yay, finance. Uh, so Temesco is a beautiful property. It was a historic site. Uh, the Methodist Church owned it in the 20s and created a Chautauqua Center. So it was a very, very important cultural landmark. Um, it has cabins uh, dating back to the 20s that we've renovated that uh, people have conferences. We've had outdoor school camp there. Um, and it's a great entry point into the uh, Topanga State Park. Lots and lots of trail users. Um, if you went up Topanga Can up to Mesco Canyon to the top, you'd be over the ridge and into the top of the Santa Monica Mountains of Encino Vista Drive. This is in Mulholland, Dirt Mulholland. This is San Vicente Mountain Park, a former Nike radar site uh, from the Cold War. Uh, we were able to repurpose the, uh, the tower, the radar tower and some of the other buildings and interpret the Cold War aspect of of that site, but it has amazing views all the way to the ocean, all over the San Fernando Valley. Um, I think one of the little known facts is that this, this was one of the uh, radar stations along the coast that were to detect incoming ICBMs and then signal down into the, um, the heart of the San Fernando Valley where there were mus missiles and also an Oak Mountain that would then apparently <laughs> or theoretically blast the uh, enemy missiles out of the sky over Ventura County. They decided that that was, Ventura County was a little <clears throat> more rural and more expendable apparently. The Los Angeles River Center and Gardens in downtown LA was the former Lowry's California Center that had the restaurants and mariachis and a big spice factory on the site. Uh, that was gonna get torn down, um, a Home Depot and a strip mall on the, on the property. Uh, and uh, through a lot of uh, hard work and several different funding sources and the cooperation of several different elected offices, including the city of Los Angeles and uh, the state assembly and uh, Prop A, the open space district of Los Angeles County, we were able to acquire that property in 1998. And it is extremely popular in the neighborhood. People think of it as a historic site, although it was built in the early 70s by the Van de Kemp and Frank family to be a sort of a showcase for Southern California uh, cuisine and to and highlight the spices and seasoning salt and everything that they had. And you all know about Amundsen Ranch, uh, now called o Upper Las Virginas Canyon Open Space Preserve. Uh, MRCA was the recipient of the first 2,500 acres as a dedication. Uh, Home Savings and Loan, then Washington Mutual had to perfect their specific plan with Ventura County. This was going to be the site of 3,000 units of housing, two golf courses, hotels, commercial. But the upper, the, the main north-south stem of Upper Las Virginas Canyon was to be dedicated without cost to the MRCA, which happened. That and Rocky Peak, north of the 118 freeway, another Bob Hope property, and Corral Canyon in Malibu, another Bob Hope property. And what is maybe a little known fact is the Canoe Recreation and Park District, you have a conservation easement over all those Bob Hope land properties. So you have to, you have to hold us our feet to the fire if we try and do anything you don't want. Here's some of the views. Uh, was it used for filming going back into the 19-teens? 
uh, big, big productions. They died with their boots on and Duel Under the Sun and Charge of the Light Brigade. And I think Gunga Din may have also been a silent film, may have been filmed out there. Petticoat Junction. This is all preceded our getting the property, but it is a state property. Uh, the Conservancy uh, bought it in 2003 with Proposition 50 funding, um, but we were required to create a separate license agreement with MRCA that has MRCA as the land manager. The state of California said, we don't want, we don't want to pay for any upkeep. We don't want that liability or responsibility. So thank you, MRCA. There's a ranch house that was built in the 1930s by the uh, for, a former owner, George Barrett IV. It's been renovated and it's used for conferences and weddings and uh, meetings. Then Soka, the former Soka University site uh, at the very heart of the Santa Monica Mountains at the crossroads of Las Virgins Road and, Mal and uh, Mulholland Highway uh, was a, a many decade long land use struggle as well. Uh, eventually, SOCA sold. We used a number of funding sources. Uh, various state agencies put in a lot of money, and uh, MRCA is, was the takedown entity. Part of it is owned by the Park Service, part by state parks, but the major, the, the grounds of the historic mansion and site are owned by MRCA. The visitor center was repurposed uh, for the National Recreation Area uh, out of what was a stable, a beautiful stable. Wallace Neff, a famous architect, had designed the facilities. And a lot of people say, why is it called King Camp Gillette? Because he was the inventor of the safety razor, or at least a, a safety razor magnet. And he commissioned Wallace Neff in the late 1920s to build a, a, a ranch for himself. And so the, most of the buildings were uh, from that era, although some others came about some years later. The, we, the Los Angeles River is another uh, huge project of MRCA, river revitalization. And our park rangers, uh, actually some maybe a decade or so ago, came up with the idea of how about kayaking on the river? It's proved to be super popular. <laughs> The Sepulveda Basin part of the river, it looks like a bayou. It's very, very verdant, and you would never know that there's a lot greater Los Angeles right outside the banks. But also in the Elysian Valley part of the river, Atwater Village, uh, opposite Griffith Park, uh, the MRCA did uh, bought up a lot of small parcels and created beautiful little river parks. There's a bikeway along the river there. Uh, Steelhead Park, Oso Park, Egret Park, and the Lewis McAdam uh, Riverfront Park is very popular as well. There's facilities there that would build. Uh, swift water training is uh, something our rangers do uh, during the storm events. They are in standby and have many times assisted LA City Fire Department and other rescue efforts uh, to keep people out of the river. Ensuring Access to the Malibu Coast is another big project of the MRCA and the Conservancy. Uh, we have the beautiful coastline. There are a lot of public access ways that were being blocked off or not, not really available. Uh, the State Coastal Commission and the State Coastal Conservancy importuned MRCA to open up and improve a lot of those access ways and provided funding to do it. This is one of the groups that we brought uh, every summer, we have a number of uh, trips that bring out uh, groups from Pacoima, uh, downtown, Compton. Uh, some of these kids have never seen the ocean, and it's a, a huge day for them. A lot of other things going on. Uh, a lot of access sites that the Coastal Commission is required to be uh, left open, but they have to be improved. So getting the conditional use permits through City of Malibu has been a challenge, but we're still working on it. This is a park that was bought um, 20 years ago, uh, funded by the State Coastal Conservancy, and we're still working through the improvements to create a restroom and improve stair access and ADA access to that facility. Hopefully, it will be done within a year. Another Malibu property, Escondido Canyon, uh, has trails that extend all the way to the beach. We bought a property under, there's a tunnel under PCH at Latigo Canyon. 
that provides beach access if people are coming down from the mountains or vice versa, and then up adjoining National Park Service property. And of course, you all know Broom Ranch, aka Rancho Petrero Open Space, formerly known as the Huck property. In the early 90s, uh, MRCA George was there, mm -hmm. went to uh, the probate hearing for the estate of George Paterius Huck, who had owned the property. They, they, we, did, we were uh, shut out of getting it then, but eventually uh, MRCA was able to buy that property with a big grant of $1.9 million from the district, $1 million from the city. Uh, the Park Service had pledged to buy 300 acres of it. Uh, with uh, funding that was coming later and the Conservancy provided the rest. So uh, another partnership acquisition that didn't happen easily. And here's a, the latest and greatest. This is uh, 1,400 acres on the Malibu, on the actually the Ventura County coastline, Deer Creek uh, open space, Deer Creek beaches it's called. It was formerly known as the Mansdorf property. Mr. Mansdorf in the 70s had plans for uh, either hotels or uh, he had put his uh, put in a bid to have it as a liquefied natural gas port, <laughs> which luckily did not happen. Um, but Trust for Public Land has the option on the property. Uh, it should be closing soon. MRCA uh, has an undivided $10 million interest in the property. So a third of the a third of the property is. MRCAs, and the ESCO should be closing any day now on that. Here's some views. It's got the most spectacular views. It'd be great for whale watching or stargazing. I think the Park Service will have plans to create um, tra more trails for the Coastal Slope Trail and potentially camping. MRCA hosts a restoration crew we have in lieu fee mitigation funding that comes from the Army Corps or California Department of Fish and Wildlife to do restoration on a lot of degraded properties. So between riparian restoration and upland restoration, also very active in a lot of tree planting with fire resiliency funding. Uh, that's Upper Las Virginas open space next to Hidden Valley on the two right-hand photos. Uh, we're planting thousands of oak trees as both a shaded fuel break and to improve the uh, biodiversity in that area. Some more restoration sites in the mountains and the undercrossing at Liberty Canyon, which was done before the bridge was contemplated, having more planting to make it a little more attractive for animals to proceed underneath without getting hit. Our fire division is, we're very proud of the fire division, starting in the early 90s when there were fires uh, I think the big Topanga fire of 93 almost wiped out one of our parks. Uh, LA County was too busy defending other areas. Uh, and we said, you know, that park resources needed to have their own uh, protection, but it's grown. Our, our staff are fully trained. Uh, California Office of Emergency Services uh, regularly calls up the MRCA to go to out of area fires. And they've been all over the state fighting big campaign fires and additionally protecting our own area and are available for call outs. Anytime there's a spot fire, uh, they can be on it often before the uh, regular fire agencies are. So how do we pay for all this? It's not easy. Uh, Melissa will describe a little more, but um, we've had to be very entrepreneurial over the years. Um, filming is a big uh, part of our revenue stream. Uh, hopefully the writer's, writer's strike won't go on too much longer. <laughs> we host events. We have leases of antennas that were on properties that we acquired. Many, many weddings in a number of venues, parking fees in certain areas, the uh, restoration in lieu fee mitigation funding, random donations. We get people just sending in checks or uh, PayPal donations all the time, including one sort of mystery one for 300,000 that just appeared in our bank account by wire transfer uh, and mutual aid reimbursements for the fire, fire division work. And uh, MRCA created a, a, with a voter approval, got community facilities districts approved in the uh, Eastern Santa Monica Mountains in the city of Los Angeles. 
which provide for funding for both Ranger Patrol, Fire Patrol, and acquisitions. And I am going to turn it over to Melissa to talk about the dollars and cents. Well, yeah. I'm going to get logged in and then I'll share because, you know, the finance side is the most exciting part. <laughs> <laughs> And while it's loading, I, I've been able to, I've been an employee of MRCA, Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy and CRPD. So my last day before retirement, I have to work for Rancho and I can have <laughs> MRCA bingo. Yes. Okay, so where do we fit in in this whole world that Rory just explained? So in short, we provide, we serve as the finance officer, we process all payments, we do the cash management, we supervise the MRCA finance staff, and we handle some strategic planning. So to explain the finance officer part, this mm -hmm. is the senior staff of the MRCA, and I know it's very little, so I'll briefly explain it in the at the very top are the two boards, the CRPD board and the MRCA board represented by those chairs is Chuck Huffer and George Lang. Um, next is Joe, our executive officer, and then Rory. And the unique situation is that for several of those senior staff, they are also senior staff of the Conservancy. So because of this close relationship between the Conservancy and the MRCA and the money that goes between the two, we needed to have the money be completely separate from the SMMC and the, the SMMC and the MRCA to make sure there was no conflict of interest. So all the money goes on the CRPD side. So our general manager serves, serves as the finance officer. I'm then the administrator and then the MRCA finance staff all report to me. So that's a way of making sure that even though MRCA and the SMMC work very, very closely together, we're making sure that the money is always good. <laughs> So we serve as that. What the CRPD staff do is they handle all of the payments. So every payment to every vendor, every payroll, it's all going through CRPD staff. We also handle the taxes that are associated with that and the reporting associated with that. Because we touch the payroll, we also are involved in some of the human resources management, like benefits and retirement, and all the things that go with the payroll. Our IT department also has to coordinate with MRCA resources so that we can have access to the same accounting system and all of that. And the cash management, we're the ones that have authority with the banks. We balance and reconcile all the reports and we manage the lines of credit that the MRCA uses. So what do the MRCA finance staff do? Because that sounds like a lot that the CRPD finance staff do. So I'm gonna ask you to imagine a budget like a Death Star. <laughs> so this is, we're gonna call this the CRPD Death Star budget. And so envision that as all the expenses you want to do in a year, but we need to fund it. So every revenue is going to be a different color of paint that we're painting this Death Star with. So for CRPD, we've got property tax, which is the primary funding source. We've got our assessment district. We've got Rancho Caneo assessment, Dos Vientos, and then the other revenues we get from programs or rentals or the other stuff that comes up. So this is a pretty typical CRPD budget Death Star. And that's a pretty good model for how we function every single year with our revenues. Now, I'm going to have you compare it. <laughs> if I can get it to click. Come on. To an MRCA Death Star. So an MRCA budget is typically two to three times bigger than a CRPD one, and there is no primary funding source, as Rory was explaining. Instead, it's a multitude of funding sources. The last budget had over 240 different revenue sources with very specific scopes that they're allowed to be used on. So what the MRCA finance staff does is they are making the budget to somehow make all of these different colors of paint actually cover the whole Death Star. And then every single month, they're making sure that the expenses are assigned to the correct color of paint. And then the other half of the staff is going and trying to get the paint because most of these funding sources are done on a reimbursement basis. So you can build the Death Star, but you can't paint it until you go and ask people for it. <laughs> 
So that's what the MRCA finance staff does. I take all the information from working with them and with Rory and senior staff to make sure that this works every single year. It's worked since 1985, but it is a beast of a budget to manage. We take all that information and then we work with the CRPD staff who's handling the actual payments and processing to make all the cash flow work. So that's in short what we do for the MRCA. And here was just a pretty photo and some yeah. Ewoks. There it is. And I will also add MRCA does pay the district for that financial service. Yes. <laughs> it's not it's not gratis. No. So yeah, and with that, I'm I'm available okay. for questions or anything. Questions. Rory, Melissa, thank you very much. If anybody in the board has brief comments or questions. I want to yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mayor Huffer. Director Nichols. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Rory, thank you for the excellent presentation. Uh, these memories were coming back and forth, all these different projects that we worked on for decades. I mean, for you, it's just off the top of the head. I keep saying we need a book from Rory Skay <laughs> on, on the, the history of open space acquisition over the last decades. And uh, I thought it was just going to be like a memoir, but it sounds like it ought to be more like the art of the deal on <laughs> all know. these transactions that you've taken place. Uh, and and I can think of nobody better than you. And I'm just you know grateful that you're part of our community, that you assist with our open space organization, and that you have been the, kind of like this linchpin holding all these things together. But just to see the uh, you know th that full spectrum of all these things that we kind of knew about, but you see them all at once, and you realize. Wow, that's a lot. And it's just fortunate that we can be a part of that. Um, you know, sometimes I think we're just kind of on the sidelines, but I know with with Melissa and her staff's work that they're and I know Jim too, just they're they're right in the thick of things. So uh and George, I mean, all, all of them, they're very active. So thank you for that presentation. Uh, hopefully we'll have another successful 40 years of this going on. So thank God you. Willing. I, I probably won't be around, but <laughs> you will. <laughs> Director Lang. Yes, um, as you can imagine, I can add a lot to the information that you've just been shown. Um, I'm as chair, I'm very proud to be associated with the MRCA. And as mentioned, um, I, I think she mentioned it. I've been on the board of the MRCA since I became a board member of uh, CRPD. Um, our previous general manager, Tex Ward, selected me to be the chair and so many things that you saw you know just in a brief moment is so dramatic when you see it you know firsthand many of you probably been to King Gillette Ranch and taken some hikes or been to some major events there and so forth and the other uh, venue is the LA River Gardens Center uh, those are our two main uh, entertainment, I don't know if that's the right word, but venues for the public that can rent and, and utilize for weddings and uh, whatever activities they want. And they are, when you see them, when you go down to King Joette Ranch or the LA River Center, you really get a feel for some really spectacular venues. And to know that we as a board here we have our role and, and doug and chuck are also on costa board um all of this comes together for the public you people and um rory thank you good good presentation thank you and let me reiterate the canoe recreation and park district is the linchpin of all these efforts and we so appreciate your uh, your benign benevolence <laughs> And uh, we look forward again to continued years of partnership. Okay, just just very brief. Roy, again, thank you very much for all the information. Um, it should be pointed out, I don't think it was mentioned that uh, in her spare time, Rory is also the chair of the Kanea Open Space Conservation Agency. So We're in her spare very time. Network chair. <laughs> and I did, then all the slides you had, is, I, I did note that you had several slides on, on the Enberg uh, Wildlife Crossing. Uh, Jim sent out an email just a day or two ago. I think you're going to need to add a picture of a black bear, black bear. using yep. that crossing as well. So <laughs> Boo Boo want, wanted to come to Malibu. <laughs> 
Uh, if you'd like to, certainly. <laughs> anyway, um, I just wanted to make a couple of comments. I was very touched by this. I was um, doing a lot of research one time on big cats, and I assumed that this was true, that the only other place that has big cats near a, a large metropolitan area is Mumbai, India. And so that's a pretty big deal. And I think a lot of people don't realize that you know, the wildlife crossing and what we have here in LA to be in such a big place and having big cats is, you know, uh, wonderful and what an excellent resource that we have that you've put your heart and soul in and that George has put his heart and soul in uh, to make this a reality for this community. Uh, it's something that I don't think that we all appreciate. So um, I heard your name so many times before I ever met you. So it's been a joy to met, meet you. And a couple of things I just also wanted to say, I biked along the LA River, but I didn't know there was kayaking. So I think that's in my future. The LA River Gardens is in my future. Um, and I was very interested when you said that that was a wonderful stable at King Gillette Ranch. Mm -hmm. I saw it when I thought it was a ruin and I heard they were gonna make a visitor center out of it. And I thought, really? I was hiking around there. It looked like a ruin to me. like. And it, 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 I thought it was pretty bad, and um, but it was nice to see that some people had a vision because I'm into uh, historical restoration and that they made it into a beautiful visitor center. It's a, a wonderful place to be. So I'm glad that they didn't knock that down. And just one other thing that doesn't is just personal. Um, my father worked at Oat Mountain most of the time I was growing up. It was a it was a telephone relay station. He was in the phone company. And I wonder if he knew there were missiles up there. Uh, it was underground. I, he probably knew. He didn't mention it. But when you said that, um, I I was kind of blown away because I've been up to Oat Mountain many times, you know, with my father. So um, uh, you gave me a lot of information. Um, and I loved seeing the history of MRCA. I also did donate to MRCA. The first time I ever knew about MRCA was many, many years ago when I received a parking ticket. <laughs> and uh, you know the way it is in the mountains, you never quite know which is free and which has a fee. So I guess this part on this side of the line, there was a fee and on this side of the line, there wasn't a fee. So I get this parking ticket and I was very kind of upset at this $60 parking ticket, but I thought, I'm going to think of it as a donation. I am now donating to this place, MRCA. So <laughs> I may, hopefully I'll make some more donations in the future. Um, and I was very impressed by your presentation. So I'm sure I will. Thank you very much. Director Rush, did you have anything? Sure. No. <laughs> Yes, I'm very impressed being the newest one on the board. It's um, I've heard a lot about this because Melissa and I met and she explained somewhat what she did for it in very brief detail. Um, but it was really I and the Death Con star was amazing because that really shows. I love the visuals. Yeah, it was great because when you were trying to explain it before, I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But yeah, so thank you so much for that presentation because I did not know all about that, even though I've been here forever. But thank you.